Good day my brother and sister, welcome to the edition. Today I want to keep it 100 with you guys. I want to be transparent, I want to be real with you guys. And I hope that this helps somebody out there who may be going through something similar. Anyway, over the last few days, I've just been feeling so tired of being broke. I have been feeling so fed up. Like there is this Afrikaans word, hatful. I've been feeling hatful, meaning I'm up to here. I am up to here of struggling and being broke. Where, you know, every single time I wanna go to the shop, I have to do these mental arithmetics as to what I can get, you know, go into your bank account, check your balance. I have just been feeling so tired. I am tired. Anyway, I have recently started going on morning walks, one hour, 30 minute walks. And I don't uh, play any music. I use the time to pray. But today I woke up having still this feeling went on the walk and I couldn't find the words. That's how fed up I felt. I couldn't even pray. So there I was, you know, I started this walk and my legs felt heavy. It's as if somebody had taken bricks, put them in my shoes, put a backpack on my bag with bricks in there. I just felt heavy physically, emotionally, everything. I felt heavy. So there I was there thinking, am I going to do this for one hour 30 minutes you know when you are in such a situation where you don't have any distractions like music and tv you are confronted by your thoughts you are right immersed in them so i was like no ways i cannot keep going for one hour 30 minutes sinking into this feeling without any escape so i remembered some of the things that i say to people on the channel here who say tato i'm struggling i can't even find the words to pray uh, i usually say to them just say to the holy spirit holy spirit please hear the murmurs of my heart and intercede on my behalf and tell the, the uh, our heavenly father my true hearts like what i'm truly feeling let it be you who prays this prayer on my behalf. I did that. And soon after I saw my, I found myself praying, you know, and, and, and I, I told the Lord exactly how I felt. I told him, God, I can't. I am tired. I am tired. And I'm not asking you for millions right now. I just want, I just want enough. I just want to be able to do the basics. That's what I want. Um, so as I continue to pray, and it truly has to have been God. I had this thought where I realized that I am walking. And the thought that came into my mind was, Tato, you know, you are overweight and you are walking. You are healthy. You are able to just walk, walk because you want to. What's going to happen when you have all the money in the world, but you don't have health? What's going to happen when you have all the money in the world and that money cannot buy you health? The thing that you, right now you have and you have it in abundance. This thought consumed me so much. Me realizing that, you know, there are people out there who have all the money in the world but they would trade that money for health, something that I currently have. They, that money cannot buy them that health. They are in and out of hospital. They are battling. And all they wish they had is health. I then got to realize that you know, most times when we read the Bible, we identify with the main characters. We see ourselves as either a Joseph, a Moses, a Sarah, an Abraham. You know, we identify with the main characters of the story. 
But in actual fact, this time around, I noticed how I, or how many of us, are the Israelites that Moses led out of Egypt. Why do I say that? If you go read that story, the Israelites were slaves in Egypt under Pharaoh's rule. And God led, sent Moses to lead them out of slavery to the promised land. But from the moment these people left, so these the people who have been oppressed for so long, but from the moment they left, they were murmuring. They got to the Red Sea after leaving this place of oppression. They are confronted by the Red Sea ahead and they start complaining saying, Moses, look at what you have done. We were better off in our place of slavery because there we had food and stuff like that. Now we are either going to be killed by the water or Pharaoh's soldiers are going to come kill us with swords here in the middle of nowhere. They complained. And what happened? God parted the Red Sea. Miracle, miracle, miracle. They rejoice. They see the God in the situation. Mighty God. Miracle worker. That's who he was then. Fast forward. They are now walking, walking, and they start to complain of hunger. They complain. They murmur. They are lamenting. They are tired. They are hurtful. And God provides manna. They rejoice. God is good. God is amazing. Fast forward in the middle of the desert. As they have gone ahead in the journey, they start complaining about thirst. They are thirsty. They are murmuring. Oh Moses, why did you bring us here? Look at us now. We're going to die in the desert. We're going to wither away. <sighs> And God led Moses to strike a rock and water came out. My brother and sister, I can keep on naming complaint after complaint after complaint. But what I'm trying to say here is that in this particular situation, I saw myself as those people. It's so easy to read the story and not identify ourselves as these people in the Bible. These people who ended up being stuck in the wilderness for 40 years because they kept on disobeying God. And if I come back to me, I realized that not long ago, it was me right here in front of you guys asking God for this house, praying to God, God, but I want a house, I want a house. God promised me a house and God delivered. I rejoiced, I testified, it was good. And then like the Israelites, I continued to go on the journey and now here I am. God, I am tired. I am hurtful. Oh, mortgage that, mortgage this, mortgage that. God, 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 God. Like, it's like, I am literally one of those Israelites. So my brother and sister, I am sharing this with you because one, I want you to realize that indeed it happens. It happens to the best of us where you have days when you all you do is complain all you do is only focus on the things that are not working in your life but what I want you to get from this video is that you staying there is a choice you staying in that place of depression oppression where you are living in mental anguish is a choice God never promised us that the journey will be easy. God never promised us that the journey with him will be smooth. But he said that he will continue to restore and renew our hope. He says, all you have to do is abide with me. 
Walk with me and I will continually restore your hope. Today I just want to encourage you that when you are in that state where your mind is trying to deceive you and wanting to keep you in the place of oppression, I want you to, like I did, seek the assistance of the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, and say, Holy Spirit, please intercede on my behalf. My mouth is not able to express to my Father in heaven the contents of my heart. But you know what I'm feeling. You know exactly what is eating me up. Intercede on my behalf and tell the Father above what I'm going through. Further, count your blessings. Guys, there's that song, count your blessings, name them one by one. Do not let the enemy allow your thoughts to consume you so much that you lose sight of what it is that God has done for you, what he has brought you out of, and what you have in the now. Don't focus so much on what you do not have that you take for granted the things that you have now. Why? Because there will be a day when you have the thing you are currently asking for and you still ask for another thing. You forget this moment when you were begging and tired and hurtful. Like me, what the Lord asked. What then a few years from now? You have all the money in the world, but you don't have the health that right now you have. What then when you have all the money in the world? I've given it to you, but you don't have health. Will you be then coming back to me and crying about healing? begging me for healing. I'm gonna just end this here, but I really hope that this gives you perspective. It gave me perspective. It gave me insight and enlightenment. And right here, right now, I am so grateful, so grateful. And if anything, I need the Lord to forgive me. I need to go to my Father in heaven and ask for forgiveness for being so ungrateful and allowing myself to go so low, so low, to lose perspective of what he has done for me. My brother and sister, I pray that this word blesses you and that it will take you out of that state of being fed up with whatever it is that you're confronted with. All these things I say in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.